today is a very special day. First off, it's not raining, which is very, very unusual. We've had record rainfall here on the southwest coast of British Columbia, so much so that the flooding has caused billions of dollars of damage. Lots of people have lost their houses, their farms, their livestock. So my thoughts really go out to them. Also, it's a special day because we get to drive this. This is the Aston Martin DBX, their very first sport utility vehicle. And even though it's not one of those James Bond Aston Martins, it's pretty close, and I'll take it. Before we even step into this DBX, I'm going to say this thing wins in the styling department, in my opinion, compared to some of its competitors like from Porsche, Lamborghini or Bentley. It really has a presence. It's got a lot of curves. I love that. It's not just a lot of angles or sharp angles. It has a lot of character. You have that signature Aston Martin grill here and these vents up top here, they kind of remind me of like nostrils of a dragon. It's, it's, this thing's just ready to just attack. Uh, you have standard LED headlamps. You have these LEDs that surround an actual air curtain that flows right through to the wheels, which are massive. This has 22 inch wheels. On the 2022 model, you can actually get 23 inch wheels. So 22s on here, you get 285s on the front and 325s in the back. They are big meats. Behind these gorgeous wheels, you have a 16.1 inch rotor and you have a six piston caliper uh, wrapped around that. We have another air curtain here really really lets the air flow through but it also adds to the styling as well and here's something quite unique this has the proximity key but instead of using a touch system sometimes you have those little ridges that you touch this is a push system so and it's not a button it's part of the handle so when you actually just push here it unlocks or if you want to lock it you just push on the other side that's it you want to open it you actually push in and then grab the handle just like that very, very easy, and the best part, it extends to the rear doors as well. You know, that's one of my pet peeves. And look how they've actually tapered the vehicle in the lower third here. It really feels like a waistline that's pinched, so like almost like an hourglass figure. Coming all the way back here, it widens out to house those big, big tires. Now in the back, this is where it gets interesting. So you get these big, big black exhaust pipes coming out. They're raised up, they're not so low. I think it just, it really accentuates it. Um, and then you have this really aggressive rear valence here, matches with this roof spoiler. There is no rear wiper on this, uh, just to be aware of. And you have this integrated kind of a deck lip here and you have these beautiful curved LEDs and the integrated brake light right in the middle and of course Aston Martin. Power lift gate with the hands-free option, there's a kick there, up it comes. It's worked every single time that I've tried it by the way, which is really good. Now in the back here you have quite a bit of room. This one's equipped with a track system for securing your cargo. There's so much detail. Look at the, the they have leather poles for the cargo floor. So we pull up on that. You don't have a full size spare tire, but you do have a spare tire, which is a big plus for a lot of people that really want that spare tire, that security of having a real spare there. And this is equipped with the air suspension. So you do have a raise and lower button in the rear cargo area. So you can lower the vehicle for easy loading or unloading, or you can raise it up. But what I like about it, it's super responsive. There's no delay. The detail extends even with the cargo lid here. It's leather. It's beautiful. It feels so good, this leather. And you have a matching piece that's connected to the cargo lift gate there. However, this does not lift up when you are actually raising this up. So you actually have to manually lift it up if you have a taller item that you want to get in there and place it back like that. It doesn't go up with it. Yeah, I can live with that. It's cold outside, let's go inside. On the inside, let's talk about some of the things that I'm not a fan of first. Uh, some might know that 
Aston Martin is partnered with Mercedes-Benz as well, which is why uh, some of the equipment in here will look a little bit familiar if you know Mercedes like this command system here. Uh, you've seen that on older Mercedes, the pre-MBUX systems. Uh, so that, it's fairly easy to use. You have a trackpad or you have the dial. However, there is no touchscreen and I keep on going to reach for that touch screen, something as, something as easy as, hey, you just want to touch that magnifying glass, you can't do it. You actually have to scroll over to it with the wheel or use your trackpad, depending on what it is. Um, otherwise, it is easy to use. Another thing, maybe I'm just not tall enough because I am set where I would be driving right now and I find the controls on the door panel are really far back. Like, you know, to adjust the mirror, I have to really pull my arm. My arm won't go far enough back, and the windows are even worse. If I were taller, I'm about 5'11", so if I were to go back about this far, well, I'd be about six foot three or so. It's definitely easier to operate those. So if you're a larger or taller driver, this vehicle is perfect for you. Also, the headroom. It's, there's tons of headroom. There's lots of adjustability uh, there. Drink holder, well, here's my Yeti coffee mug here that I use. It's a real, real tight fit. It essentially doesn't fit. They're very, very small drink holders. And um, that's not uncommon for non-North American vehicles. And the gear selector, this is a shift by wire system. So you have your gear selector and your engine start stop on the top in the center of the dash. So drive is pretty far away. Um, I've gotten used to it, even in, in one day I've gotten used to it. So there are a few things, nothing overly glaring. However, sometimes you just have to sacrifice a little bit of function for a whole bunch of style. And this is the thing that surprised me the most in this Aston Martin. The leather work in here is absolutely incredible. Uh, it's just, it's, it is just feels like you're just driving a bespoke suit. Everything just fits so well. And I learned something new. Um, all the perforations, this is called broguing. You probably know that, but if you didn't, it's called broguing. And it's very, very stylish on the seats. Love the seats. Even on the door panel, you got full leather on the door panels and the broguing on the, for the speaker grills, just everywhere you get this creasing on the top here. The visor itself has beautiful leather even for the mirror. And you have a separate side shade. So the boys over the straight pipes, they'd be happy about that. The driver's display is a 12.3 inch digital cluster. It's configurable. Uh, you do have redundant controls. You can control everything from the steering wheel here. Steering wheel, what I like is it's not overly thick. You know, some real sporty uh, SUVs or even sports cars have really, really thick steering wheels. This is, it feels really nice for everyday driving. This is also equipped with a 360 camera and Apple CarPlay. Android Auto is not available at this time for this vehicle. So hopefully for the next iteration, we might get it. Android Auto and maybe a touch screen. That, that would be pretty good. Um, there is a fair amount of plastic in the buttons on the bottom here. Doesn't bother me too much, it's very glossy. Underneath, you have this pass-through, and you have this perfect spot for your phone. Just sits really nice in there. Now, this 2021 model does not have wireless charging. I believe the 2022 will have. Um, however, this perfect spot, your phone will not stay there very long. As soon as you hit that throttle, uh, and it'll just fling itself to the back. But it does look good there, doesn't it? The rear will hold three passengers. Two would be just perfect. You have a, a lot of knee room, very generous headroom, by the way. And this vehicle is equipped with heated and ventilated seats for the front and the back. There are just some things that are very, very hard to convey in pictures or video or even words. And you just have to experience it. When you, like, when you sit in here, like the, the wood, the wood and the brushed metal and just the leather, just the leather, it's just, it's absolutely uh, stunning. It just has to be experienced. The only way I can ex explain it is, this is my seven year old handmade leather wallet. Um, seven years old, the stitching is still, it's got tiger stitching, tiger thread. Um, it's 
some of the best leather. It's still supple, it's still soft. There's no, there's no cracks or anything with this leather wallet that's used every single day. And you know, and it just has a great patina to it. The more that you use it, the better it gets. And that's kind of what this interior is like. It's it's very, very bespoke. And it feels like it was made just for you. And you know what? All these vehicles are hand built anyways, and maybe that's what they're trying to get across. And it really does feel special. I know it sounds like this is a love affair with this car, but you just have to experience it. Let's go for a drive. All right, let's start that beautiful red button there. Boom, here it comes to life. Ooh. Hear that? It's actually fairly quiet. When we get into the other modes, it does open up uh, quite a bit more. So let's just get driving here. Once again, drive selector up in the center <laughs> to the right. Kind of odd. All right, here we go. Full disclosure, I'm not just gonna launch this thing like crazy today. The reason being is I'm probably the last person to get this vehicle. It's, it's the press vehicle uh, for the season. It's December right now. It was snowing earlier this morning and I have these big monster 325s on the back here and we have performance summer tires on. Not super safe. So, uh, but if it were dry, you could have a lot of fun in this if you choose to. Uh, if we go into our sport modes or different modes, first of all, we have two um, off-road or all-terrain modes in a way. And if you actually select those, you will also get the suspension raising up for you. All right, so we can get into Sport Plus mode. Now, Sport Plus is a little bit hairy on these wet roads right now and wet cold roads because your traction control is off. I just want to let you hear the difference in the exhaust. It sounds great. Oh yeah. So under the hood of this is a four liter twin turbo engine. And we mentioned the partnership with Mercedes. So this is an AMG derived engine and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm no expert, but I've done you know some research and I've also talked to uh, a former AMG technician, master technician. And he said in his 20 plus years, of working on those AMG engines that less than a handful of times has he seen an actual large failure of this engine. They are literally bulletproof. Uh, what he did warn me about though is the other things, kind of like the fancy suspensions uh, and those air suspensions. So that can get costly down the road if you have to replace certain components of that. So, so you got the four liter twin turbo V8 it puts out 542 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. That's matched to a nine-speed automatic. And you know what? It shifts great, it's, it's fast. And I did get it, uh, there was a kind of a sunny day out uh, earlier on this week, and I did get it out going pretty good. Um, yeah, downshifts are good, it shifts hard. And for outright acceleration, it is plenty quick. Uh, 4.3 seconds for zero to 60. Uh, pretty decent for the size of the vehicle. But you know what? It's not just about the top speed, which is over 180 miles an hour, and the acceleration of this. You really do not feel like you are driving a sport utility vehicle at all. It's really heavy on the S in, as the sport. Uh, it doesn't feel heavy at all. You feel like you're driving a very nimble sport sedan. You can lower the seat nice and low if you want. Um, I love looking out and you see those those two vents out the front, those dragon nostrils as I call them. This is a really good all around vehicle, four season vehicle. Just put some winters on here and you're good to go. Go up to the mountain, no problem, because you do have standard all wheel drive. Now this is definitely a more sport oriented vehicle. So it is a rear biased system. Most of the time when you are driving around, if you don't need that extra traction, it's operating as a rear wheel drive vehicle. And, uh, and then if you really need it, you know, it'll kick in that front end. 
Suspension wise, we have adaptive dampers as well. If we go into the comfort setting, this would be the nice setting, but right now we're on uh, a highway right now and you're just cruising along. The exhaust gets a little quieter. The gearbox will try to change into the uh, a higher gear so it's not revving so high. It'll save you a little bit of fuel as well. And the suspension, well, here we go. We get some big bumps coming up. There's even signs of saying big bumps. <laughs> here we go, there's a big dip coming here. Here we go. It's dampened so well. No bounce or the rebound at all. This is what you want. This is super, super ideal for everyday driving, for sure. Uh, the noise in the cabin is minimal. This road that we're on is fairly loud. It's got that, that rough type of concrete. We're isolated pretty well. Now, one thing that I do wish, because AMG has it as well, is that there is no exhaust button to just go and flick that exhaust on, because sometimes I just, I just want to hear that beautiful sound of the V8 and uh, you know hear it more, and I don't want to go into sport mode. Well, you can go and go into individual mode, and you can set whatever you want, your steering, your suspension, your transmission, and your drive, and your exhaust. You can set that, but I think it's, it's just nice to have a button just go bloop, and then you have a nice, nice, nice throaty exhaust. Uh, but also, when you turn the vehicle off, and when you turn it back on, it always defaults to GT. Uh, I can't find a way to change that. I like it to maybe default to, you know, the last setting that you had it. That'd be nice. But yeah, anyways, it's just a couple clicks of a button. Believe me, I wish I could test the performance of this a little bit better, but the conditions just are not optimal uh, at this time, especially with these tires on here. Okay, so far, what do you think of this DBX? You like it? Don't like it? You like the styling? Leave a comment below. And if you don't like it, which one would you like in this category of vehicle? You like the Lamborghini Urus, the, the, uh, the Porsche Cayenne, the Bentley? You know, leave a comment. But I'm gonna tell you one thing. I park a lot of vehicles in my driveway year round, and I have for uh, almost two decades now. And I had a lot of neighbors come up to me. And you know what? It's, it's funny because it's a treat for them. A lot of them say, you know, it's a treat every, every week when we come by, we walk by your house to see what there is, you know? And um, so a lot of them, when I brought this home, they stopped by and they're like, wow. They, first of all, they had no idea that Aston Martin even made an SUV, number one. Number two, uh, they love the look of it. And you know, and I, I can't blame them. I, I think it, it looks great. It's got some great styling, as we mentioned uh, earlier. And you know, there's just something really special. I'm really lucky. I mentioned that we have the Genesis GV70 at the same time right now, and nothing to, you know, not putting that vehicle down at all because in that review, I said that it's pretty well one of the best values out there if you want a luxury vehicle at a non-luxury price. And so, it just comes with so many standard features. And, and it's, I, I stand by that. However, when I got this and I went from one vehicle, got out of the Genesis, got into here, it's then when you notice the contrast, you're like, wow, styling wise, you can just see that there's just so much more involved. The interior, that one has a beautiful interior, but nothing like this. As I said, like even, even this is a new car and it has, it's full of leather. It doesn't have that really gross leather smell. Uh, I, I don't know if you know what I mean. I've gotten into a lot of brand new cars with leather interiors and it's almost sickening. Uh, it's, um, you know, I think it's not just the leather, it's, it's all the glues that they're using in, in, uh, in the interior as well. This, it just really, uh, has that bespoke. I know that's a very generic word nowadays, but it does have that bespoke uh, feeling and it just, yeah, they just feel, it feels like they just know me. They just know that I like this type of stuff. And um, yeah, just the door handle even. When you open the door and you feel the door handle in the wood, just they just know what you touch and what should feel good. So, but it's not perfect by any means. You know, once again, no touch screen, 
uh, the gear selector is a little odd. I can live with it, but you know, as soon as I get into a vehicle that has a regular traditional shifter, or even in the Genesis that has the, the shift knob, you know, it's much easier to use. Um, no Android Auto yet. Uh, and then even for your advanced driving assistance, there is uh, radar cruise control, you have uh, lane keeping warning, you have blind spot warning. Uh, however, there really is no like lane centering type of system on here, but the, the lane keeping will give you haptic feedback and will ap apply the brakes. And I had a couple of instances where it, it did it uh, and it was quite aggressive actually. So that de definitely does work and it really wakes you up actually. Um, but yeah, uh, another nice thing about this Aston Martin is if you end up buying one, you, you don't see one of these on every street corner. Like depending on where you live, obviously, you know, you, you might not see a lot of Bentleys and Rolls Royces and, uh, you know, but in the area that, that we're in, in the lower mainland of British Columbia, there are a lot, a lot of luxury cars here. Uh, Lamborghinis are, are, you know, this is gonna sound cliche, but Lamborghinis are a dime a dozen around here, like it's, it's nothing, you know, it's like when you just see them out, there it goes, there it goes another Lambo, right? Exotic cars are, just, they're just the norm around here, but you do not see many Aston Martins, especially the DBX, because this is fairly new. And, um, and that's a nice thing that, you know, do you want to buy something that neighbor down the road's gonna have the exact same one as you, or do you want something a little bit more special? All right, so if you've lasted this long into the video, I have to thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have subscribed if you like this channel. And I know that a lot of people will say, hey, why are you test driving this car? You know, not many people are going to buy it or can afford it because this one starts uh, at about $200,000. As tested here, this one's $222,000 US dollars. Um, yeah, so it is not inexpensive, but yeah, you're in a whole different uh, ball game here when you're, you're shopping for vehicles like this. So, um, but why am I test driving this? Well, if someone offered you an opportunity to drive one of these, what would you do? Wouldn't you want to actually drive it and then share your experience to other people? even if they didn't have a chance to? Well, that's kind of what I'm doing, and I hope you appreciate it. You know, like, the, we're not on the on a racetrack or anything. Actually, it's starting to kind of lightly snow now even. So, um, anyways, thanks for listening to me. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next Everyday Review. Cheers.